you said something about a fall video riding in the fall something you wanted me to do something about a telling you how to getting in my face telling you how to get ready for a fall ride or something like that something like that so what do we gotta do well first of all yes tell us Stanley you might want to bring a couple different layers because conditions can be changeable in the fall layer up in other words so layer up so that way we don't end up with Terry on the back of the bike crying all day because she's freezing, <laughs> which happens quite often because she doesn't do believe that. me. Wrong. It's warm. I'm going to be just fine. And the next thing you know, it's, this, all, it's nothing but tears all the way home. Okay, this, this time of year is tricky, right? Yeah, so go prepared. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bring an extra layer. You know what? I learned from my mistakes, mister. Uh, we all wish that was true. <laughs> the reality is something completely different. So we're heading to the wine country. Heading to the wine country. Calistoga. Calistoga. Here we come. Terry has wanted to go see the petrified forest. Yep. Forever. Pet petrified forest. So, so we're going to go check it out. Yes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's a beautiful late September day for riding as we roll up Highway 128 past Lake Berryessa. This next scene is in late October. We did a ride a while back that we wanted to bring you guys to kind of show you some different ideas for ride destinations in Sonoma County. And then right after that, there was a devastating forest fire here that uh, unfortunately burned a lot of businesses and houses and, and uh, took a lot of lives. And this we're at the corner of uh, Highway 128 and 121 and this is uh, the first uh, indication that there was a, a fire through here. It's a month later we, re we are retracing our uh, ride. Hopefully all the places we were going to show you are still, still intact there. and we're going to hook up with some friends that unfortunately uh, didn't have good luck. So no. anyway um, Stay Pat. tuned. For those of you who have been following us on YouTube for a while, you've probably noticed that we really enjoy our backcountry twisty roads. The twistier the better. It's like a roller coaster. Highway 128 fits that bill pretty well. It's very scenic, a really enjoyable ride. And before you know it, boom, we're in wine country. Yeah, it's crazy how you're just riding through the canyon and then all of a sudden it's vineyards and you're in the wine country and... That also is a very beautiful area to ride through. Absolutely. I sure wish that we liked wine as much as everybody else does. It's probably a good thing we don't. But here we are arriving at the Petrified Forest, our first destination. Terry's been wanting to come here for years. We're on a Terry mission day. It's solid rock. Are you sure? I'm positive. It looks like wood. It, it does. doesn't feel like wood. Isn't that weird? Yeah, amazing. Seriously, I it's mean. It's even got like a little burl right here, but it's all stone. A burl. That's not little though. The only pine tree? I think that's a, the only pine tree we've found in this forest. Yeah. The only petrified pine tree found in this forest. That. That's pretty cool. The giant. Okay, explain it, Stan. This is some of the volcanic ash from when the volcano erupted and petrified the trees to begin with. So the trees were buried in hot like dust. And the silica from the dust soaked into the trees which turn them to stone. Right on. Wow, check this out. The queen. The queen, just sitting right out here. That's... Petrified sequoia redwood. 65 feet long, eight foot in diameter. It's solid stone. Yeah. Robert Louis Stevenson tree. This is the first tree discovered by Charles Evans. Petrified, Petrified Charlie. Right here. What a discovery that would have been. You're like, what the heck is this? Man, dude, it looks like a real tree. It doesn't look like it's rock. Yeah. Whoa. What's in here? That's the rest of the tree. 
Oh, yeah. That's why it's called the tunnel tree. 105 feet long. Check out this oak, too. Yeah, that thing's beautiful. Wow. What a beautiful tree. Thankfully, uh, it's here. It's still here. It's closed um, right now. It looks like the backside uh, got a little burnt. So probably on that, there's a one mile trail in there where you walk around and you can see all the petrified uh, logs. Uh, and they're probably fine, but some of the trees that were back there probably did burn from, from what we can tell. That huge oak tree that's uh, beyond over here, um, it looks it's like safe. it's still intact. So we're, that's really good news. That's really good news. So, so hopefully this place fared okay, but we do think there was some fire in there. Yeah. If you would like to come and visit the Petrified Forest, I would just suggest giving them a call ahead of time just to see if they're open. As of late October, they were closed. We're going further into Calistoga to the Old Faithful Geyser. Cool place. Very cool. Yeah, it would be. Look at all the bamboo. You can see the little bubbles in the, it starts bubbling in the water around. Look at it. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, this is a, this is a long one. Yeah. We were pleased to see that uh, the Old Faithful Geyser was still intact, no fire damage there. The mountains around there was burnt, and now we're back on the Petrified Highway heading to Petaluma, and north of the highway is all burnt. South of the highway fared pretty well. Yeah, we're going to be heading into uh, Santa Rosa here in a second. You can see the banner still up on the overpasses thanking the first responders who did an outstanding job. Uh, fighting this fire. Now we're going to Coffee Park where uh, it was huge, hugely devastated. You can see where the houses are are just fine. The fences were scorched and then the next house was completely gone. It was just bizarre how it worked. This entire subdivision was wiped out. The video we're showing you uh, and the news, if you watch any of the news coverage, just does not do do uh, show you the complete devastation it was shocking shocking how much devastation there was there and all these were homes people running for their lives they had like five minutes to get out of their house in the middle of the night just all of a sudden the fire was moving so fast that people had to literally run for their lives yeah it's it's pretty devastating there was even one guy that survived the fire in this park right here which is surrounded by the neighborhood that all burnt and he but he was burnt really bad look at they got cat food out oh yeah there's a bunch of cat food and dog food just spilled all along in the park basin with animals. Jeez. It's so like a bomb went off. Yeah, so you can see why people were actually getting out of their cars to... Yeah. Run for it? Yeah. This photo of our friend Mary really struck me as just the, showing the despair of going through this kind of a thing. Uh, what a horrible experience. And But thank you to Will and Mary for giving us access. And thank you to Michelle for being our tour guide. Oh, oh my gosh. So what were you able to, um, what did you say you found? Uh, a pig, piggy bank. A piggy bank. Yeah. Do what, Doesn't that look weird? Yeah, it looks like a person. Yeah, it does, huh? And what was that? They don't know where it came from? or? Yeah, from the aluminum wheels. And this guy was like two, two months away from finishing his class. They just got done. And this part, this pad, he just added on to the house. Oh, jeez. Oh, 
the emotions were very, very raw for Will, Mary, and Michelle, and we really appreciate them opening up their uh, their experiences with us. I mean, this was very, very tra- traumatic. Yeah, it definitely was, and uh, a big uh, heartfelt appreciation to those guys for sharing their experience with us. we got to give a shout-out for uh, the first responders on this. We heard stories of, of policemen watching their own house burn down while they were directing traffic across the street, trying to keep the cars moving to keep them out of harm's way, or firemen that were uh, fighting the fire and trying to save other property while they knew their own house was burning down. Just incredible stories of struggle to survive. Absolutely. I mean, when they say Sonoma Strong, this community is seriously Sonoma Strong. That's for sure. We've we've always known that this was a strong community, but this fire, you could see the community coming together, and it was amazing to witness it from the outside. If you feel inspired to help the people uh, that suffered from the fire in Sonoma County, please go to our website, hillontwowheels.com, and we will have some ideas and ways for you to reach out and help the people directly in Sonoma County. Thank you for watching and come back to Hill on Two Wheels soon.